I know somebody can relate to that song, hallelujah. I know somebody been through some stuff, hallelujah. Experience lost, major cause, whether it be your husband, your wife, your children. You know your heart has a little scar on it, hallelujah. But you made it through. Could have lost your mind and gave up. Hallelujah. God is good, y'all. God is good. I thank and praise God for one more day. I thank and praise God for being my all in all. Can nobody do me like Jesus? I'm glad I, as a man, I could cry out to the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't have to worry about nobody. I'll be crying going down the highway, praising God. Somebody might think I'm crazy. I ain't ashamed to praise God. I'm not ashamed. I'll cry out any time. Hallelujah. Some people want to hold back. I ain't holding back nothing. God didn't hold back for me. Hallelujah. Yeah, man, I wake up praising God. I go to sleep singing songs in my head, humming. Hallelujah, because he's been so good to me. Man, I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be alive, y'all. When I had a first accident, and my car was wrapped around the post, it looked like a U. The officer said, if it, had, if it, was, on, it was on your side, you would have been gone. Spinned around. Man, my first car. Man, I went back and looked like the, look at the car. The car looked like a U. Man, cars, cars aren't supposed to look like a U, are they? It's supposed to look straight. I say, Jesus, man, you're good. I've been through some stuff, y'all, this year, I tell you. You know, I like to work for Jesus. And I had to go through some therapy and stuff like that in my body. So I told my pastor, just let me take care of myself first. And then when I'm able, I'll get back and doing God's word. Yeah. I believe in making sure you are good first. My body wasn't right. My mind wasn't right. I said, I'll take care of my body because it was too much pain. Go to therapy and do everything else. And say, I'm, I'm happy today. I don't take being in front of you lightly at all. Because you are souls of God. I'm held accountable for what is being preached in God's, God's word. He could use somebody else. But he's using me. Hallelujah to help somebody. It may be just one word you go to home tonight. And it might stick in your head. And that's help. Every time any of these preachers come up here and preach. I'm listening diligently because I want to get something. I want something to stick to my ribs y'all. I want to know more of Jesus. You can't, you can't help yourself to learn more about Jesus. Because if you look now, we're in the last and evil day. You, just, you say to yourself, man, I'm ready to go to heaven. I just can't take this no more, Lord. You know, you go to work and people are mad for no reason. You know, it's like, man, I, well, you have to go to work because you got to eat. You got to pay your bills. And people are just so negative now, and, and so much going around. It just don't make any sense. They, they, just, they don't know how to be grateful. Seems like nobody's happy. It's like, okay, what's going on? I go to work, something's going on. I say, man, I say, what's wrong with you, Peter? Why you always look so happy? I say, why should I be sad? I say, there's too much negativity going in the world right now. Somebody got to be positive. We are the light of the world. The chosen, the ones that are filled with the Holy Ghost. We are the light. And if God put you in a place, he wants you to be that light in the place. You're going to hear all the curse words, you're going to hear everything else, but you're the light, y'all. I say, well, Jesus, if you're going to keep me here, just give me some more strength to deal with them folk. Why are you happy? Well, you come to church, you can be happy. Come on with me, I'll bring you. Oh, okay, I'll speak about it. Amen. All right, enough said. Thank and praise God for my beautiful wife and my lovely kids. They're all big. One home, she ain't doing so good. They eat all my food. 
I made some chicken and it was gone. Came back and said, My goodness, they leave a little piece of me. They work that thing. See, they like Papa's cooking. Amen. I thank God because, Amen, I got a helpmate to help me. Man, when you got a helpmate, that's good. Minister Christian. Amen. It's good. Hallelujah. It's good to have a helmet. I thank God for mine. She helps me a whole lot. Spoils me. We should spoil one another, y'all. Not for real. Sometimes I bring flowers to her unexpectedly. Yeah. Sometimes you should do that. Amen. I love everybody in here. Amen. And when I look at you and say I love you, that's real. Because I didn't have love in me, y'all. God had to put it there. Today we are going to talk about in the book of Psalms, Psalms 37. Amen. I ain't going to be before you long. Amen. Amen. Psalms 37, verse 1, 2, and 3, and 4. Amen. Amen. Um, uh, scripture checks, scripture checks, or lesson text verse coming from verse 4. Amen. Amen. Delight also, the, delight also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of thine heart. Amen. My lesson is going to be today, where is your desires? Where is it at? I want to know where is your, your desires at? Where is your mind at? They got so many scriptures in that. Hallelujah. God said in the beginning that I am God and I am jealous. Okay? In the beginning of Genesis, I'm sure somebody has read it. Put no other gods or anything before me because I'm a jealous God. That's what he said. And I wonder why he said that. Amen. There's a reason why. Because God don't want us to be unfocused. And when you have too much stuff in your life, you just lose focus. You desire this, you desire that, looking at this, somebody has that, and all that mess. God don't want us to be comfortable. So might as well forget that. If you're having a rough life, say thank you Jesus and move on. The Bible said the meek shall inherit what? Yeah. The poor in spirit. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. No matter how much you read God's word and you read just a verse, there's always something in there to open up your mind. And then beside that verse gives another verse. And then like the sister said, when you keep reading and reading, then you just get lost in the reading. And then it just brightens up your mind. And the more your mind gets brightened up, the more you think to yourself, man, I really want to be with the Lord. When pastor was describing the way heaven was like last Wednesday and I was sitting there and I was speaking to myself man wow he's going to make me ruler over some things man I really desire to go there I want to go there that makes you want to live even more holier hallelujah that's the word you hear the word and you say man wow and then you hear the word again you say man I don't want to I don't want to be there in the tribulation. Oh, no. It sounds scary. The sister was talking about super, 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 supernatural. It sounds scary, y'all. Beast with heads of animals. and No. Lord, I don't want to be there around there when that happened. That makes you want to be even more holier. Now, if it don't scare you, I don't know. It scares me. I get scared when I hear that. That's coming from the Bible. That is God telling you to shape up, be right, because I'm coming for a church. Amen. Hallelujah. Where are your desires going to be? Amen. The psalmist David, I love David. He's, I love David. I just, you know, because I love, I like to sing. So, you know, and he, he's a man after God's own heart, and he loves to just, Tell it like it is. Amen. And David said, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be envious against workers of iniquity. Hallelujah. 
We should never envy the wicked, even through some may be extremely popular or excess excessively rich. Yeah. Yeah, man. Whew. People are going to have nice cars, big houses, nice this, and all that stuff. God don't want you to have that. So stop lusting after that. Hallelujah. Don't worry about what they have. It ain't going to last long. They're going to be happy for a while. But what happens later? You know, it's like buying a car. You buy a car, right? A real nice car. Maybe a Rolls Royce if you got money. Those cost about $500,000. But when it starts going bad, it's going to cost you more money to fix it. So why put all your energy into something that's going to cost you? Why have a desire for that? All right, so, man, I'm going to come to church. I'm going to get saved. God's going to fill me with the Holy Ghost. And then you can taste and see that the Lord is good. Now, there's nothing like the Holy Ghost. You can't explain it. I mean, you, when you're going through something, and the God comes and he touches your mind. And then you feel it. And you can't explain the feeling. But the feeling is so good, you forget about what's around you. You're all by yourself with Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, fret not yourself. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Let him enjoy this stuff. It's tough. Amen. Don't be envious. Hallelujah. Don't put your desire in things of the world because they mean nothing. Hallelujah. I'm a jealous God. For they shall soon be cut down like grass and weeded as green herb. You ever look at the grass in the springtime? You know, we make it, I don't know, some like me, I like my grass nice and green, so... I fertilize it and stuff like that, and it looks nice. And then the boys walk in, and I say, man, you got to get up the grass, bud. <laughs> you, you walk in on the green grass, rock on the sidewalk. It's to admire. Hallelujah. And I put ask my wife I water it because I just, I just like look at that nice green grass. And somebody comes, and they walk in the grass, and they say, man, your grass is so soft. I say, that's good. Now you can get off of it. <laughs> okay? Like grass. What happens in the winter time? It looks some different color. It don't look green no more. There's nothing to admire. I can't put my desire in it no more. It's gone. See, that's what's going to happen. They're going to be enjoying the things of the world. And then after a while, it ain't going to look green no more. But you, amen, you say, for they shall soon be cut down. Amen. We read that already. Trust in the Lord and do good so that thou dwell in the land and really shall be fed. Now this particular scripture, verse 3. Dwell in the land and be fed. The land means a great place reserved for the righteous. Amen. Be fed. Be fed of the word of God. The Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The word that's coming out of your Bible, that's the word that's going to proceedeth. Is, all this is Jesus. Ain't nobody else. It's coming out of him. Hallelujah. That's what you're going to live by. I mean, you go, you get hungry, and then you go to, like we went to Golden Corral. And we ate so much. I think Brother Darshan was ahead of me. I couldn't keep up with him. <laughs> but we ate ourselves happy. I think, I think Brother Larry, I think he had about one, two plates, so that was it. 
But we ate ourselves happy, and I guarantee you we went home afterwards, and they probably was looking for a snack. They don't want to tell me that, but I think they was. Hallelujah. That ain't going to fool us. The word of God, you read, and you pay attention, and you, and you say, Lord, let's let me meditate on your word. And it's feeding your soul. And, 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 and now, the food don't even really matter, nothing else. The sister was saying about brick walls. I, br I build big old black walls, brick walls, and stuff like that. Sometimes we build them on either side, four corners, and I turn around and say, man, how am I going to get out? Oh, there's a door right there. Hallelujah. And you build them, hallelujah. And they're strong. But God is going to keep you in that place. Hallelujah, in the middle. Where you could just enjoy him. And the more you read this word, the more he just feeds your mind. And mm, I can't explain the way I want to. This is what desire means, right? A strong feeling of wanting to have something or wishing for something to happen. Amen. A strong desire of wanting. Sometimes we want too much clothes. Sometimes we want too much food. Sometimes we want the nice things that the world has. We desire a fancy car, a nice house. Hallelujah. Some of us want some toys. Like a motorcycle or a bike or a four-wheeler. Hallelujah. We dress it up like me. You know, I dress up my Jeep because I like a Jeep. That's a strong desire, but I don't spend a whole lot of time with it. Hallelujah. You could have the stuff, but don't give praise to it, y'all. Hallelujah. Because it means nothing, hallelujah. Just a piece of metal. It's just something made up of wood with shingles on it. Or brick and block. Guess what's going to happen? A, hurry, a earthquake comes, it's going to fall right down. So why spend all your time designing something that ain't going to get you where you're supposed to be? Why put your designs in stuff? Well, I, got a, I have a nice watch. I didn't pay too much for it. But I ain't buying another one. Hallelujah. I see all them boys out there with bling, bling on. Man, I ain't you know bling, bling. Man, you must be crazy. Guy say, where do you shop at? I go shop at the Goodwill. I don't go to the mall. Hallelujah. Why am I going to waste my money design clothes that y'all, oh man, we look so good in that. We look fancy. What, what is foolishness is that? Who are you trying to impress? Hallelujah. We put our designs in the wrong things. Some put their desires in animals like dogs. Well, I gotta go walk the dog Sunday. Why you gotta choose Sunday to go walk the dog? Um, I'm gonna watch it on live stream, but I, you know, I gotta watch the dog and all that mess. Why don't you just wake up early in the morning, bring the dog to church? <laughs> Maybe God might save the dog and tell you, son, the dog might talk to you like the donkey was talking to the guy that wanted to go. Hey, Peter, we need to go to church. What happens if your dog talks to you like that? So they put in the desires in, in animals, in all kinds of mess, and they're forgetting about God. He don't want us to do that. Amen. The word of God is our food. Matthew 5 and 5. Okay, this is what it says. Matthew Chapter 5 and verse 5. Just give you a couple of scriptures. Like I said, I won't be long. Just open up your mind a little bit. Amen. Matthew 5 and 5. Amen. And it says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Mm -mm -mm. Blessed are the meek. Now, the earth you're talking about is just not the earth itself. Is the earth meaning there could be several things. It could be a place in heaven. It could be the special earth that God prepared for them. Amen. Three more scriptures here. And I'm done. Amen. David said in Psalms 145 and 19. Psalms 149 and 19. This is what David said. Amen. I love David. 
He said, He will fulfill the desires of them that fear him, and we will also hear the cry, and he will save them. Amen. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. How many of you all fear God? Hallelujah. He will fulfill the desires of whatever your desires are. Hallelujah. It may not be what you want, but that's what you're going to get. And he's going to tell you, well, you're going to be all right. Like I tell my children, well, when they was growing up, you say, well, I want Nikes. I say, well, we're going to get shoes from um, uh, what that place was called before they closed it down. I forget the name of the place. Yeah, Payless, yeah. I said, well, daddy could only afford Payless right now. And, 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 and they were small. They said, okay, dad. Yeah, they didn't give me no trouble. Because I've given them that look. <laughs> I am feeling this about that. He's laughing. <laughs> Amen. I know you desire some journals, but man, y'all tripping. I'm giving you all that. I don't care what you desire. Yeah. And when they were small, they were designed not to eat the greens. I said, well, if you eat the vegetables, you're going to be nice and strong like daddy. Look at me. He said, for real? I said, yeah, man. And then boys trying to eat that thing. They, they're forcing it. Don't taste so good. Man, you're going to be strong. Look at my muscles. Okay, dad. <laughs> Hallelujah. The desires, hallelujah, to have something. Amen. Proverbs. We got a few more and I'm done. Proverbs 10 and 24. Amen. Hallelujah. Boy, that word is such a powerful word. Fear of the wicked, the fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, but desires of the righteous shall be granted. Hallelujah. The desires of the righteous. Hallelujah. Those who do not believe in God usually fear death. Hallelujah. But with good reason, by contrast, believers desire eternal life and God's salvation and their hopes will be rewarded this verse offers a choice you can either have your fear or your hopes come true you can make the choice by rejecting God and living on your own or by accepting God and following him that's a choice y'all in desire there's a choice you could either say, well, I desire to have this watch because it has, it's more prettier. But it's not waterproof. So suppose I drop it in the water, it's gone. Or I desire to have the one that not looks so good, but it's water resistant. So if I drop it in the water, I'll still be able to tell the time. If I drop the other one that looks so pretty and it's not waterproof, See, that's the thing of the devil, man. He push on you the most prettiest things. Right. Hallelujah. Right. And so that might say, man, I, I, I would like that. But it doesn't really work. It will not work after a while. Because it's the wrong kind of desire. Hallelujah. We should never be envious of the wicked. They will be popular, very rich. All the stuff that fades and vanishes, grass in the winter. In the end, those that follow God will have greater treasures in heaven. What we get from following God lasts forever. Hallelujah. God gave us the gift of the Holy Ghost. I don't, I don't think somebody actually understands what it says, the gift of the Holy Ghost. I say it's a gift. I was talking to one of the kids that said, the Holy Ghost is a gift. All you have to do is repent. That means turning away from everything. Hallelujah. If you desire that. 
that's something that you have to desire and want. And you don't have to be down there 30 minutes trying to tarry. You could get down there one minute and God will fill you just like that. Because that's what the Bible says. With stammering lips. Hallelujah. You should, because you got to have that desire to say, Lord, that's what I want. Hallelujah. I went down to, I was coming from home one day, and I said to myself, you know, I don't really like to have a Jeep. I ain't got no money, though. I just went down to the place, and I said, you know something? What do you have? He said, I got this or that and that. Okay. Can I have that one? But I don't want to pay a whole lot of money. He said, well, we see what we could do. And then I went back home, and he calls me back. He said, well, I got it for law. I said, man, that's nice. I didn't have no money. I just went down there. I just stopped and just went in. I came home. My wife said, what do you do now? Honey, I desired a Jeep, so I just bought it. <laughs> I just did it. Hallelujah. I said I wasn't praying about it. I didn't ask God about it or nothing. I just went down to the store and I said, man, what do you have? Can I have that one? He said, yeah. And I just took it just like that. Now, if we could all just do that. They say, Jesus, I desire some more strength. I desire you more. Can you give me that? Oh, my goodness sake. He's, he's going to open up your mind and say, okay, well, my child, this is what you should do. You get in the book of Proverbs or Kings or whatever. Read this verse right quick. And see one it enlighten your mind. It's going to blow up your mind so much. You, you, you never know that it was there. That's what the word of God does. Hallelujah. It blows up your mind. Hallelujah. God said, I'm a jealous God. I don't want you to put anything before me. Hallelujah. When I wake up in the morning, it's Jesus. Hallelujah. When I go to work, Jesus is still on my mind. I come from work, Father. Can I give you some more praise? Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, you are worthy. Yes, Lord, can I just muster up a little more strength and say hallelujah just a little louder, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Say, son, what are these? Well, Father, I desire to get deep into your bosom, Father, hallelujah, when you can hide me from this world, hallelujah. My desire, Jesus, is to speak more for you for the Spirit, hallelujah. Glory to God. When I come to church, I'm entering to his courts with thanksgiving and giving praise, hallelujah, because that's what I desire. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. And trust in everything, our lives, family, jobs, possessions. We have to entrust everything to God. Everything. Our jobs, our lives, our families, our possessions. We have many desires. Amen. Some are kind of, some are not. Amen. Stuff like that. But, hallelujah. You got to tell the Lord. Say, Lord, today... Let me desire you more, Jesus. Let me not look out to the world and see what's out there because it ain't going to really matter. Hallelujah. Last verse. And we're done. Amen. In Romans chapter 14 and verse 13. Last verse. This is what the Lord is saying. The Lord is going to help us out for the word. Romans chapter 14 and verse 13. Last one and amen. Done. Amen. Everybody have it say amen. amen. Tonight is more, more of a teaching night, more, more of a preaching night. You just to enlighten your mind. Hallelujah. And this is what the Lord said in Romans. Let us walk honestly. As in the day, not in rioting, drunkenness, not in chambering, not in wantonness, not in strife, not in envying, but put ye the Lord Jesus and make no provision for the flesh 
to fulfill the loss of their own. Hallelujah. This is what he wants us to be honest with yourself as in the day. You don't have to pretty temptations and stuff like that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But he said, put on here the Lord Jesus. If you put on Jesus every day, if you desire just Jesus every day, I know you know, we're in the body of flesh. Sometimes our minds get away and stuff like that. But he said, just put on Jesus. Hallelujah. And some walk around, say they're speaking in tongues every time. I pretty much doubt that. I don't know how somebody could do that. Somebody might think you're crazy. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, let this mind be in you as it was in Christ. You have to have the mind of Christ. Christ came here for a purpose. He didn't come here for nothing else. He was around the Pharisees and the, and the Sadducees. And the woman came in, I believe Mary, or Madeline or something like that, and she was an adulterer or something like that. She was a, a how do you call it, the women of the night, something like that. And then she came, and she came to Jesus because she was designed to get out of sin. She wanted to make it to heaven. And she came, and she started to cry on his feet. Hallelujah. His feet, now, you know, like Pastor said, back in the day, their feet wasn't that clean. And she, I think Mary Magdalene, if I remember. And she came and she cried on his feet. She was a prostitute, I believe. Yeah, that's what she was. And she came and she cried on his feet and stuff like that. And then she used her hair to dry his feet. And so I think it was the Pharisees that said, to, do, do, does he know what kind of woman that is? That is coming and crying on his feet. And she didn't desire sin no more. Her desire was to get rid of the sin and be with Jesus. And the Lord told her, he said, Sister, your sins have been forgiven. Go on. Hallelujah. Sometimes that's all we need is a little more Jesus in our life. Hallelujah. When things get tough, call on Jesus. Cry about Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I see folk coming here sometimes sit down. But this is the time for sitting down. This is the place of worship. This is the place where you could be yourself and say, Lord, I'm in pain right now. Hallelujah. I'm struggling. I don't lost my family member. I don't lost this father, but I came, hallelujah, to give you thanks and praise. My leg ain't working good. My arms ain't working good, Jesus. But hallelujah, while I'm here, hallelujah, and got breath uh, in my body, Jesus, I want to magnify your holy name and lift you up, hallelujah, glory to God. I may be going through, I have one dollar in my pocket, Jesus, but I'm trusting in you, hallelujah, to give me some joy, uh, unspeakable joy. I'm trusting you, Jesus, hallelujah, to make a move for me, hallelujah. Lord, I'm hurting down in the inside. People think that I'm happy, hallelujah, but I'm sad, Jesus. But hallelujah, I'm here, Jesus. Glory to God to magnify your holy name and to bless you. Because I desire you, Jesus, more than anything else in the world. Hallelujah. God is good, y'all. God is good. I'm so glad I can give all my problems to Jesus. Each and every day I try. I'm in the body of flesh. I realize that there's a naked in his flesh and you're going to desire stuff. But the message today was try to desire more of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're aiming for one place. That place is heaven. Hallelujah. This world is not our own. We see what's going on in the world. Hallelujah. We got to hold one another Hallelujah, in prayer and love, hallelujah. Tell your brother you love him when you see him. Tell your sister and pray, hallelujah, glory to God. Because we're trying to get one place. The, the, the Lord said a church. He didn't say an individual. He said a church. The people, we are the church. Hallelujah, glory to God. Would you desire more of Jesus? When somebody say, well, why, why are you at? Why are you? Why are you so in church so many times? What's going on? Well, 
I don't have time for anything else. I'm a church goer. The guy said, you go to church twice a week? I said, yeah. Man, we have fun. The kid said to me that I was here, um, Philip's friend, this is, this is how good it is. He said to me, he said, man, when I come, if I stop back this way, I want to come back here. He was going to church in Chicago. And he said, man, that was nice. He had a ball, he said. He said, we used to go to church in Chicago, but this church is something else. He said, I feel happy in here. That's my son's friend that was with us Sunday. So you see, when we, hallelujah, show the light unto the world, make somebody going to be saved. I'm praying that the whole of Cassopolis be saved. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bring your brothers, your sisters in. I talk to my co-workers all the time. I said, well, man, you know, the reason why stuff's going on because we're in the end time. So when you come to church with me and hang with me a little bit, you know, you got, you got throw in there a little bit slick, you know. Hey, man, you want to come and hang with me? Where you going to hang? I'm going to hang at church. You want to come? Friday, man. We're going to have a party. Say, what? Yeah. We're going to have a Holy Ghost party, man. I talk to them like that. They say, man, you're crazy. <laughs> but that's how sometimes you got to do it. I thank you, praise the Lord. Amen. I was, I was able to, amen, say a word tonight. I hope somebody got something out of this. And they're going to have more desire for Jesus and nothing else. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all stand on your feet. Let's go home.